Hello, and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly, and welcome to spring. The first day of spring was last week, and in celebration, we got a big snowstorm. <laughs> it was very windy, and we probably only got about three inches of snow, but is anyone else ready for spring and a little nicer weather? Anyway, other than that, it's been a pretty uneventful week, except that I did get new glasses. And I, I really like them. Um, I've been watching the PBS series Victoria, and I'm almost done with season two. A lot of you have been recommending that show to me, and I finally started watching it on Amazon Prime. I absolutely love it. You were right, so thank you for turning me on to it. After I finish recording today, I have to go into my office. I don't have any classes, but I have a bunch of meetings all afternoon. So without further ado, I'd better get right into the show. Today I have a book review for you, and then we're going to go into the classroom and talk about knitting needle organization and storage. If you're interested in getting some ideas and inspiration, then keep on watching. In today's book review, I'm going to be talking about an audiobook entitled Synthetic by J.T. Nicholas. This audiobook was just released on Audible a couple of months ago, so it's very new. This book was an unusual choice for me because it's outside of my normal historical fiction genre. This is kind of a sci-fi novel set in a dystopian future. It's also a detective story and a murder mystery, and like I said, these types of books are not my norm. But the description of this book really intrigued me, so I took a chance on it. The setting of this novel is the remnants of the city of New Orleans, which was wiped out by a superstorm and rebuilt as a floating city. The story opens with police detective Jason Campbell at a gruesome crime scene where a young woman has been mutilated and murdered and her body left in the street. However, the body is soon identified as that of a synthetic, so this case is dismissed as destruction of property, nothing more. You see, synthetics are genetically modified human-like beings who are born in a laboratory and raised for the sole purpose of doing any number of jobs that humans don't want. They are treated worse than animals. They're simply things, a renewable resource. Yet they look like humans and can bleed, feel, and think. Synthetics are expensive to buy and they have no rights under the law. It's perfectly acceptable to torture, rape, and kill them. They're only programmed to follow instructions and are incapable of harming anyone. They're basically powerless slaves in a society that doesn't consider them human. So in this slave world that benefits real humans, Detective Campbell, who is secretly a synthetic sympathizer, discovers this crime scene where a synthetic has been murdered. Because synthetics are so scorned, he's forced to conduct the inv investigation in secret if he wants to keep his job and if he wants to keep his personal history hidden as well. He is aided by a mysterious informant who calls his attention to the previous murders of other young female synthetics. Campbell's partner in this case is a female police detective from the gang violence unit who, like most people in this society, is blind to the plight of the synthetics. Add in some corporate corruption and conspiracies and you have a plot that is pretty engaging and convoluted. While taking us deeper into the mystery, the story warns us of a future built on the concept of us versus them that drives a lot of the conflict in the contemporary world. Could corporate greed and capitalism someday make us forget what it is to be human? 
Some people might say that the setting in this book is unrealistic, that we are a society who would never allow people to treat animals the way that synthetics are treated in this book. But as we all know, humanity has a sad history. And as a social psychologist, I know what the research says about prejudice and how the right dose of certain social situations can transform ordinarily good people into evildoers. The question of could something like this really happen is part of what drew me into this book. After reading it, I think the question is not could something like this really happen, but how can we prevent something like this from happening? Synthetic's plot is primarily a wonderfully twisted mystery with action sequences and moral dilemmas that will make readers think and question what they know about humanity. I did enjoy the mystery behind the story. It definitely held my attention in different ways throughout the book. Detective Campbell is a character with layers and depth, and these layers and depth come to light at a steady rate. There are not a lot of supporting characters in this book, but this works well with the story because Campbell is kind of a loner, so he would have limited knowledge of the people around him. There's always some kind of question you want to know the answer to that keeps pulling you along in the story. Like, what was in Campbell's past that needed to be expunged from his record? And why are these synthetic women being murdered? My feelings about this book are that the plot really shines. It was also interesting, kind of interesting, to read about a car, a world where cars um, drive themselves and cameras monitor the population. The feel of this book is like a cross between George Orwell's 1984 and Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. But I thought there was one weakness in the book and that is pacing. Some parts of the story were kind of too detailed while other parts lack detail. I didn't think this was a huge flaw but uh, I generally enjoyed the book anyway. I was a little disappointed at the end though because I felt like the author was merely setting the scene for a sequel so everything wasn't nicely wrapped up. In fact after I finished the book I found out that Synthetic is the first book in a planned series and the second book was actually just released this past week which is kind of surprising since the first book just came out in January. But the second book is entitled uh, Syndicate, so I'll probably have to get that one on Audible at some point. Overall, I would say that this story is well constructed, the writing is good, the dialogue and descriptions are fabulous, the storyline is a little dark at some points, and there's some violence, but fortunately these scenes are not super detailed and are written in kind of a uh, detached police report tone. I would say that if you are a fan of sci-fi, futuristic dystopian novels, or crime thriller novels, or detective mystery novels, or if you're like me and simply enjoy thinking about things like how society could get to a place where synthetics were part of the culture and treated like slaves, then I would recommend this book. I would think it would be a great book to discuss with a book club, especially for the moral and ethical issues, as well as the historical explore, exploration of how such a social system could emerge. This, it's kind of hard to give it stars. I, I think I'm going to give it three and a half stars. The audiobook reader was Brian Hutchinson, and he was okay, not the best voice actor, but acceptable. So I'll give him three stars. And again, that book is Synthetic by J.T. Nicholas. All right, so today we are looking at different ways of storing and organizing knitting needles. Now, I did a live Periscope broadcast about this topic a couple of years ago, so I already was familiar with some needle storage ideas. And last week, I did a little poll on Instagram asking you guys how you store your needles, 
And there were some really great ideas there. And I also spent a lot of time looking for other ideas of storage methods online. So in all those ways, I came up with a list that is maybe not comprehensive, but includes probably something for everyone. And that's what I wanna share with you today. The biggest challenge for me to do this video was structuring how I was gonna present all this information to you. So I've organized my organization ideas into several categories and subcategories. The main categories are going to be driven by the types of needles. And let's start with straight needles because I found those are a little more simple to store. One of the most common storage solutions for straight needles is to just put them in a pretty vase or cup and display them like a bouquet of flowers. A lot of people in my poll said they don't personally use straight needles to knit, but they use them to decorate their knitting space. And that's what I do as well. With these, you can easily include your antique needles and the ones that were handed down from your mom or grandmother, and you can use all kinds of containers to display them in. Another fun way I saw you could display your straight needles is to make one of these cute little hedgehogs and then stick needles into it, which would represent its quills. I think this is adorable. I haven't been able to find the pattern to make it, but there are some similar ones on Ravelry that, that are smaller. If you use one of those patterns, you would probably have to alter it to make it bigger or use thicker yarn and larger needles or something like that. I saw some that were knit and others that were crocheted. But anyway, it is a cute idea. Here are a couple of other display ideas for your straight needles. One is to use a test tube holder and insert the needles into the holes. This one that I found is wooden, and as you can see, it would work for not only straight needles, but also for DPNs and crochet hooks. You can either store the needles inside the test tubes or by themselves without the test tubes. I like the look of the wood stand and the scientific appeal of using a test tube holder for needle storage. Another similar design is to use a partition box like this one to store your straight needles. This one happens to be a vintage wooden knitting needle display box, but you could use similar boxes made out of clear acrylic or wood or a partition basket or anything else that you might have like this. Sticking with the wood theme, but if you don't want your straight needles sitting out in the open, maybe you want to put them inside a cabinet or something. Well, in order to corral everything, you could get one of these nice wooden needle boxes. I found this handmade one on Etsy for $120. It has two sides, one for your straight needles and the other side for your fixed circular needles. Each side is lined with felt, which gives it a luxurious look and there is a wood panel that fits on top of the straight needle side to hold them in place so they stay there when you close the box. Another way you could store your straight needles is in a fabric case that rolls up. Now for these you could sew your own. There are a lot of patterns available for purchase if you look online. Or you can buy them already made and there are many to choose from on websites like Etsy. I found this one on Etsy for $25 and it holds 10 sets of straight needles. Here's a similar one I found on Etsy for crochet hooks and it is $27. The nice thing about these roll up cases is that they're compact and they don't take up much space and they're made out of pretty fabric. And lastly, for straight needles, if you're looking for a way to organize your straight needles that's portable, here's a DIY idea. You can make your own needle cases out of PVC pipe. They are cut to the length that fits your particular needles, and depending on how large the pipe diameter is, you could fit different numbers of needles in them. And these are something you could throw into your knitting bag and easily take your needles along with you. So those were some ideas for organizing your straight needles. Now let's go on to interchangeable circular needle sets. And this one was kind of easy because most interchangeable sets come in some kind of a case. So most people responding to my Instagram poll said they keep their sets in the cases they came in. 
And that's what I do too. I store my interchangeables in this acrylic bin in their original cases. And these are bins that you can get anywhere. I probably got this one at Marshall's or someplace, but I know they have similar ones at Target and Walmart. And I like this one because it has this little lip on it for a handle and I store this in a cabinet and then I can easily pull it out. But what if you have an interchangeable set that didn't come with a nice case? Well, you can certainly sew your own case or you can buy them. This is one that I found on Etsy that I think is very nice. It is a clutch that has places to put all of your needle tips plus wider slots in the back that are for storing the cords. It also has a zippered pouch at the far end where you could store little notions like the tightening keys, stitch markers, a little scissors, tapestry needles, or whatever else you want to put in there. And once you have everything in place, you just fold it up and the whole thing snaps shut so everything stays secure. I love that this is a small compact clutch that's easy to take with you and it's pretty. This particular one is $31 on Etsy, but there are literally dozens and dozens of these to pick from if you do a search. Another one that I found is from Knit Picks. This one is vinyl and has a zipper that goes all the way around it to close it up. There are slots where all of your needle tips will fit, and then on the other side is a zippered pocket where you can store the cords and other accessories. It comes in several different colors and they range in price from $14 to $20. So I think that covers interchangeable needle sets. People are either leaving them in the case they came in or making or purchasing a case to store them in. Next, let's talk about storing double pointed needles or DPNs. DPNs usually come in sets of five needles of the same size, so you have the special problem of keeping all the needles in a set together. One easy way to do this is just to put a rubber band around the set of needles to keep them together. But then you have to figure out what to do with all of your rubber banded sets. Of course, you can keep them in a box or a bin, or I kind of like this idea where you store them in a pretty vase or glass. It's like the idea of displaying your straight needles in a vase that I just talked about. Another idea that I already talked about for straights and interchangeable sets is to either make or buy a case for them. I found this lovely case for $45 on Etsy and it has space for 14 sets of needles from tiny sizes to large sizes and it all folds up and snaps closed as a pretty clutch. Here is another style that I found on Etsy which rolls up. It has 12 pockets for needles and has attached ribbon that you tie to keep it closed once it's all rolled up and this one is $22. Now I have my DPNs, my shorter DPNs, in a similar case. Mine is kind of like the clutch style. It folds together and then snaps shut. These are all of my four, five, and six inch long DPNs. This case has 16 pockets in the front and then four larger pockets in the back. Most of these cases have a fabric flap that folds down over the top of the needles so they don't fall out. And it's padded with some lightweight batting. You fold it three times and then snap it shut. Now I got this one from a shop on Etsy, but unfortunately they're no longer open and making needle cases. But you can find so many cases like this on Etsy and elsewhere if you just do a little search. I like that you can get them in pretty fabrics and that they're nice and compact and keep your DPNs organized and secure. Another idea for storing your DPNs is a wooden rack like the one I showed you for storing your straight needles. Here's one that I found from Cashmere Cape that is handmade specifically for organizing DPNs. It has 15 compartments that hold needles US size 0 or 2 millimeter up to US size 15 or 10 millimeter and each hole can hold about 10 needles. The holes are all labeled with the needle size so you'll always know which needles go where. And you also have a choice of wood, either poplar or red oak. 
The cost for this is $130, so this is a very elegant high-end option. Okay, here is another interesting storage idea for your very small size DPNs, and this is a needle sorter and gauge from Handwork Hardware on Etsy. I haven't seen one of these in real life, but it looks like it has a metal tube. It has a screw on lid and inside is a plastic divider that separates all of your small DPNs by size. At the top of the plastic insert, there are gauge holes that are labeled so you know which needles are in that compartment. And you can use those gauge holes to measure your needles if necessary and make sure they're in the right section. The needle sizes it can accommodate are a US size triple zero, which is a 1.5 millimeter, to a US size five or a 3.75 millimeter. But I think they're in the process of making others to handle larger needle sizes, which will be really nice. This one currently costs $26. Now I like this idea. It's compact, portable, and keeps your tiny needles sorted and protected. Now I have a couple of easy DIY ideas for making DPN storage. The first one is something that I use myself and that is storing each set of DPNs in toothbrush travel cases. I do this for my longer DPNs that won't fit into the fabric case that I just showed you. These are needles that are seven inches or longer and you can get fabric cases that will fit longer needles, but the one I have only fits up to six inch needles. So for the longer ones, I went to the dollar store and bought a bunch of these travel toothbrush holders. I bought some sheets of numbers like this at Joann's and I used these to label the size on each toothbrush holder. The toothbrush holders were less than a dollar each at the dollar store. The only thing is that with these particular toothbrush cases, they have a hole on both ends for air circulation. So like if you're keeping your toothbrush in there, those holes are big enough that the DPNs would just fall through. So to rectify that, I had some of these dots these dot stickers laying around the house, but you can buy them at Walmart, Target, office supply stores. Anyway, I stuck one on each end of the case. So they each have a little green sticker, but then I also covered it with a couple of coats of clear fingernail polish so it wouldn't come off. And that worked perfectly. I keep all of these cases in an acrylic bin that matches the one I keep my um, interchangeable sets in. So they're right on the shelf and I can easily pull this out like a drawer and get to what I need. Another DIY idea that I liked was this one where you organize your DPNs in a sheet protector. The sheet protector would need to be the kind that is open on the side like this one. And you would need to figure out how many DPN sets you could store in one sheet, uh, measure out how big you wanted each section to be, and then put a row of staples where you wanted the sheet to be divided. So like in this picture, they have the sheet on the right storing four sets of needles and the sheet on the left storing six sets of needles. I like that this wouldn't be very expensive. You can get these side zip sheet protectors for like $5 at uh, for a package of 10 at Staples. The nice thing is that they fit into a three ring binder so you can zip the side closed so the needles don't fall out and your DPNs would be organized, protected, and not taking up a lot of space. Okay, so those are some suggestions for DPN storage and organization. Lastly, I wanted to cover storage ideas for fixed circular needles. It seems like they have the potential to be the biggest disorganized mess if you don't have a good organization method that works for you. And it seems like so many of us have a lot of fixed circular needles that we need to organize. And I'll say that I found probably more ideas for storing fixed circulars than for any other kind of knitting needle. There are so many options and I'll try to show you as many examples as possible. And then I'll share with you how I store my fixed circular needles. 
So first, let's talk about needle cases. There are many, many choices for cases for storing your circular knitting needles. Here are some that I found. This one is from Knitter's Pride, and you can get it for around $30. It has space to store 14 pairs of fixed circular needles, plus you can buy additional needle pouches in packages of five for $4. The whole case zips closed, and it even has a handle on the binding edge so it's easy to grab and go. It comes in different fabric patterns, so you can choose the one you like the best. Chowgu also makes a similar case, which resembles their interchangeable needle set case, except this one has a white satin strip decorating the outside of the case instead of the red one that's on the interchangeable sets. It has 16 pockets inside that will work for any brand of fixed circular needles. The pockets each have a Velcro closure and are labeled with US sizes 1 to 15. The whole thing zips closed. There's also an outside zippered pocket to hold accessories, and the Chowgu case is $40. Of course, Haya Haya makes a case as well. The fabric is brocade and cotton, just like their interchangeable needle cases. This one has 27 pockets, but only nine of those are for circular needles. The rest are for DPNs or crochet hooks. It also has an exterior zippered pocket to store accessories. It closes with a button and loop like their interchangeable case does. And the Haya Haya case is about $35. In addition to these brand name cases, you can also find a multitude of handmade fabric cases for fixed circular needles online at places like Etsy and eBay. One that I found on eBay is this one by Main Crafts for $25. It's a fabric case with eight plastic pockets for circular needles, and it closes with a Velcro tab. I like this one because it's a little smaller than the others that I've seen. When closed, it's eight inches tall by four and a half inches wide, so it's very portable. There are a lot of fabric choices too. The only downside is that it only has space for eight needles. Here's a case that I found from a maker in Canada called Jezebel B on Etsy. The case is made out of denim with leather trim, so it's very sturdy. It has 18 pockets for storing needles, and what's great is that you can either leave them in their original package or take them out and put them directly into the case. On the left side flap is a lined pocket for storing accessories. To close the case, you fold it into thirds and fasten it with the Velcro. When it's closed, it's like a clutch handbag size, 16 inches long and 6 inches wide. And this one is a little over 60 US dollars. This is another type of needle case which uses clear plastic pockets, and this one is handmade by Needle Caddy on Etsy. The case itself is made of heavy duty canvas with a zipper closing around the outside and it has a padded handle. Inside there are 10 durable Ziploc pockets with Velcro along one side which attaches to the Velcro inside the case. And these pockets are where your circular needles go. The needle caddy is $25 plus you can get additional sets of 5 pockets for $5. The whole thing is nine inches square by one inch deep. Another handmade style of circular needle case is this one by So Darn Close on Etsy. This one is an accordion style and measures about six inches square. Inside are five felt pockets where you store your fixed circular needles. It closes with cotton ribbon and beads. There are several different fabrics to choose from as well and the cost is around $35. Again, the drawback is the limited number of pockets. It only has five, but I do like the accordion style and thinks this would be great for some people. And speaking of accordion style, there are some other DIY options that you might like. One easy idea is to pick up an expandable coupon or check file like this one, and instead of coupons or checks, store your circular knitting needles in it. 
These even have tabs where you can label the different size needles and several needles will fit in one section. Okay, here is a popular way that people are storing their fixed circular needles and that is using one of these hanging needle organizers that you can either buy or make yourself. As you can see on this one, all the needle sizes are clearly labeled and you just insert one needle tip through the appropriate opening and then the needle just hangs there. You can hang the whole thing from a clothes hanger like this one or you can hang it on a wall or any vertical surface like this one. Some of the prettiest ones I've seen in this style are from Della Q. They are made out of taffeta silk and have 21 pockets that are labeled for US sizes 0 through 17. There's also a zippered pocket on the bottom for storing accessories. And it measures 32 and a half inches long by 10 inches wide. The Della Q hanging organizer comes in several different color choices and runs about $45. I wanted to briefly mention another option where you can store your needles on a needle gauge like this one. You just insert one needle tip through the appropriate opening on the gauge and then you'll always know which needles are which and they'll always have a storage spot. The only downside here is that you can only store one needle of each size. but. Maybe this is an idea that you can use for storing needles that you use the most or something like that. And you could even hang it up. This one has a little hole on the top. Anyway, I thought this was a fun idea. Another common system for storing and organizing circular needles is with binder type cases. A lot of these are DIY, but you can buy some of these as well. Here are some examples of binders you can put together yourself. What I did for my circular needle storage is buy a three ring binder and then got some of these uh, eight and a half by 11 inch Ziploc pockets where the needles are stored. I've been using this system for several years now. I bought a heavy duty binder from Staples for under $15. Uh, mine is a three inch binder and I think they go up to four inches. I inserted some pretty paper into the clear outside pockets to make it look nice. Um, it has D rings so they have that flat side and your pages will stay stacked um, neatly on top of one another. I did insert a piece of cardstock into every pocket just so they would be a little more sturdy and I labeled each page with the needle size. And then I inserted all of my needles of a particular size into that pocket. So for example, all of my US size 4 needles are in this pocket. Some have shorter cables and some have longer cables. Some are wood, some are metal. There's all different brands. A similar idea is to use a fishing binder which you can find at any outdoor store like Bass Pro or Cabela's. I found this one online at Cabela's for around $20 and it comes with eight clear bags that are two hole punch to fit into the rings. Now I used to use this system, but I went to the binder system just because I thought it was a little prettier. <laughs> Another option is to use a CD wallet like this one I found on Amazon for under $10. It has separate pockets for CDs where you could insert your circular needles and the whole thing zips shut. So I think it would keep your needles secure. And you can get these in different sizes and colors as well. Now let's look at some options for wall unit needle storage. Here's an interesting one that someone made by screwing cup hooks into painted beadboard. And they put a frame around it and labeled the hooks with different needle sizes. So then the needles just hang from the hook that indicates their size. You could do something similar with a bulletin board and decorative push pins. Or you could use a pegboard system like this one that you might see in a yarn shop. Now I actually used to store all my fixed circular needles this way. I kept them in their original packaging and just hung them from long hooks on the pegboard. The only reason that I changed to the binder system was simply to save space. These wall units do take up space, so that's something to consider if you're thinking about using them. But they can be decorative and make your space look like a yarn shop with all the needles hanging, hanging on them.
If you're looking for a closed storage system where your needles are put away and not sitting out, you might be interested in using drawers. You can get those stackable plastic drawer systems at Walmart and Target for around $10 each. So you could organize your needles by size in different drawers. Or you could get a little fancier and organize your needles in a wooden drawer unit with dividers in each drawer, like this one. And I'll end with a very easy and inexpensive option, and that is to put your circular needles in Ziploc bags and keep them in a little basket or bin. That way you can label the bags so you know what size needles are in there and you can put them in order by size so they're easy to find. Wow, so that's a lot of needle storage and organization ideas for you. I know I didn't get to everyone's system, but I tried to hit the ones that were mentioned by a lot of people or that were unique and interesting to me. But now, let me know down below in the comment section, what do you do to store and organize your knitting needles, whether I mentioned it or not? And do you know of any other storage systems that I didn't talk about? I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and seeing what storage methods work for you or that you're interested in trying out. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. I hope you found this guide to knitting needle storage and organization to be helpful. As always, in the information box below, I'll include links to everything I can that I talked about today, at least as much as possible for some of these things. Just click on the show more to open up the box and you'll see all the links there. Please also let me know in the comment section if you have any questions about today's show, ideas for future show topics, or product tests. I'm always adding to my list and enjoy interacting with you so much. And I read all of your comments, even if I get behind in responding to each individual comment. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and I'll see you in my next video. Now this video marks the end of the first quarter of season two here at U University, so I'll be taking a little break for just a few weeks. I'm going to try to be back with a new video around April 16th, so look for that. You can always subscribe to my channel and click the little notification bell so that you'll be alerted whenever I post a new video and you won't miss any. I hope you'll come back and join me again next time, and until then, stay smart and have a sparkly few weeks. Bye everybody, take care.